Texas for a Ellen Page a burst voice. onto the scene with a quirky indie hit, Juno. I mean, I'm already pregnant, so what other kind of shenanigans can I get into? Her performance created a buzz. <laughs> Well, one of the best screenplays I've ever read. Yeah, it's, it's, it seemed yet another Canadian was climbing the Hollywood mountain. Soon, she was manipulating dreams with Leo DiCaprio in Inception and getting the superhero treatment in the X-Men franchise. Don't you know who I am? But for Paige, something was holding her back. Because I'm tired of hiding and I'm tired of lying by omission. In 2014, she delivered a powerful coming out speech. I suffered for years because I was scared to be out. Now she's become an outspoken advocate for gay rights. It's still daunting. She co-hosts a TV series that explores LGBT culture and attitudes across the world. In the US episode, she challenges then presidential candidate Ted Cruz over his opposition to same-sex marriage. I'm happy to answer your question, but not to have it back in the court debate. And in Brazil, she comes face to face with an ex-police officer turned self-confessed serial killer of gay people. I want to say that I'm gay. Do you think that's safe? And now, Paige has added producer to her resume with her latest film, Into the Forest, written and directed by another Canadian, Patricia Rosema. Do they have any idea what caused it all? Paige stars in the film, too, playing one of two sisters struggling to survive in a post-apocalyptic world. I sat down with Ellen Page earlier this week in Toronto. Ellen, so nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Thanks for having me. So your new movie, there's lots of Canadian content, even like Canadian origins. You discovered it in Halifax. I did, yeah. I was in a store that I love called Plovers, and the woman working there, she said, hey, I think you should read this book. Like, it would make a great movie. And I was kind of like, okay, you know. And then I read the back of the book and I was like, yeah, this does sound like a good movie. Um, and then I devoured Jean Hegland's beautiful book and, and we started looking into the rights and moving forward with it, yeah. Why don't I have a signal? Okay, there's no water either. There's nothing. A beautiful book that's about apocalypse. <laughs> Yeah, so it's complicated because it's as, as, as beautiful and poetic and lyrical and lovely as the book is, it's definitely full of, you know, brutal moments and tragic moments. Are you afraid of an apocalypse? <laughs> mm. um, is, everyone must be a little bit, you know. I don't think we'd be so attracted to post-apocalyptic stories and, and films and um, I know I am and I think this one excited me so much because it's told in a very, very intimate way, you know, uh, through the relationship between these two sisters and their struggle to survive and persevere. So you're producing, you're acting, you're doing indie films, you're doing the X-Men, you live in L.A. But we want to take you back. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. A, spe the a special iPad. CBC moment. Oh, shoot. Let's see if this rings any bells. What's in this? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it does. You don't get to see you anymore. We're asleep when yep. you come home and pit asleep pony. when you go That's to the pit. That's Pit Pony. It's not fair. This is my professional acting school, debut. Will you bring us candy and cake? No. John did. <laughs> Aww. So that was your first gig? That was my first, yeah, job I ever got. I'm wearing a wig, actually, huh. because I my hair was so, so short. Yeah, just a fun fact. How old yeah. are you? Ten years old. Wow. You know, my parents were never stage parents at all. They were amazing and actually really encouraged me more you know oh, you got to keep up your grades you know you love soccer play soccer and I think kept it very grounded with the expectation of you don't know what's going to happen with this you know kind of thing. So two years ago you came out uh -huh. um, and I read that you were afraid before that you thought that you couldn't I mean is it still a scary thing? to come out in, in Hollywood? Yeah, I, th I think so, clearly, or I think we would there'd be more out people. Um, you know, I think it's something that's changing, for sure, but it's, it's, and it's, n you know, I'd like to say it's not overtly said. I know people it's been overtly said, too, so uh, uh, that, yeah, if you come out, you know, no career, and it's gonna fall apart, and people aren't gonna believe you, and the you know, the straight parts or whatever, that kind of thing. For me, hasn't been the case at all. And um, it's the best decision I've ever made. And being in the closet, in my opinion, hurted my career far more because I wasn't happy, I wasn't inspired. 
and closed off to the world. And, um, and so I couldn't feel more uh, fortunate or lucky because a lot of people do come out and don't receive applause and don't get an outpouring of love and support and don't have a career that they love that pays, you know, um, I'm a very fortunate person, yeah. You've done this series called Gaycation, mm -hmm. which is not just about gay people having fun on the holidays. There's more of a message there. Yeah. Um, there there's one scene in particular in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So you meet this officer who basically says he's cleaning the pigsty of gay people, mm -hmm. and you decide to tell him, hey. <laughs> so right now we're on our way to go interview a gentleman. He is a cop, but he also happens to be someone who really hates homosexuals and has killed gay people. Well, I want to say that I'm gay. Do you think that's safe? We're gay, and I'm wondering if you think it's better for the world for us to be dead. What was that like? Um, you know, in intense. I think in those moments you, because I think people ask a lot, like, oh, do you get you know, scared or, you know, and I'd be lying if I said there weren't moments where, of course, you know, and that, that's, that's an intense moment to have with a, another human being. But I think you're thinking mostly of the people who, you know, live in a space or live in a community who have no idea that this, you know, man's walking right past them and that he's claiming there's many other people like him who sort of do this work of cleaning up the streets of, you know. Killing gay people. Killing LGBT yeah. people. Um, and proudly so. Um, and so, yeah, it was um, incredibly intense, and I think yeah, more than I even expected. Obviously, there's nothing like until that moment. But how is how is discrimination? How is negative rhetoric really affecting people's lives and really affecting our society? And what is that doing to people? Is it good for people to see how much hate there can be? That's a great question. I hope that. Our show is 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 showing all spe all aspects of the community around the world. You know, I think, you know, how nice would it be to make a gay travel show that was just like utterly blissful, but that would not be accurate. You know, the reality is is that people all around the world, LGBTQ people, including in North America, really struggle. You've said that coming out, you you're happy that you've got a career and a life. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, then we see things like the bathroom bill and some of the rhetoric that we've seen flying around the last couple of years, a yeah. few months in particular. Um, are things getting better? Like, are people more tolerant? Um, I, th you know, I think so. <laughs> I think, you know, I think we, what you're saying is a really good point because these things pop up and you're like, oh, really? You know, which is how I feel in terms of all these, you know, grotesque anti-trans bills, uh, anti, um, you know, or the fact that in many states in America, you know, you can be fired for being gay or trans or denied housing, you know, that's the reality. And I absolutely think that the progress that happens should be celebrated. I mean, not that long ago, it was illegal, you know, you could be, you were, you know, people were thrown in jail. Um, and so the progress is, is clear, you know. Um, but the reality is, is yes, absolutely, there's still an enormous amount of discrimination. And, uh, and a lot of it does come from, you know, political figures and negative rhetoric. Who's winning that fight? I, I think equality's winning, and I think um, equality will win, um, because I don't want to sound cheesy, but I do think that love wins, ultimately. And to me, I think a lot of the, the sort of debate and, and, and uproar that is that's definitely real, I think, is the sort of backlash to the progress. So you're, you're back in Toronto for the summer? Like, I wonder, how, do oh. you, how much do you miss Canada? We, we need to hear you talk about it. I know, <laughs> I know, I want to talk about it. I miss it, you know, because I do, you know, I pretty much, I live in Los Angeles now. Uh, I look, I miss it. I miss Nova Scotia, where I'm from. I love Toronto. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to spending some time here soon. Have a great summer. It's lovely Aww. to meet you. You Thanks. too. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks.